If you've ever attended a performance of Handel's Messiah or listened to varying recordings, you've probably noticed that the number of performers, instrumentalists and singers varies considerably depending on the performance. You'll often see uh, a chorus that could be very large or small along with soloists, an orchestra that could be comprised of a very large ensemble with modern instruments or a more contained ensemble with uh, using what we refer to as period instruments or instruments that are um, built after uh, instruments at the time period in which Handel lived. You've probably also noticed a number of different keyboard instruments that might be on the stage. This could include uh, small organs, even large organs sometimes, and harpsichords, uh, maybe even guitar-like instruments that are all a part of this ensemble that uh, is presenting Handel's Messiah. Well, all of these different keyboard instruments speaks to a practice that was very common during the 17th and 18th century, especially during Handel's time, in which the keyboard played a uh, kind of supportive role along with the bass instruments of the ensemble. This practice is referred to as the basso continuo or thorough bass, in which a keyboardist, either at an organ or a harpsichordist, at a harpsichord, uh, realizes or creates a chordal accompaniment that goes along with the bass line. Uh, this is a practice that one studies and learns. We even teach it here at Oberlin uh, to our keyboardists. Um, it's an improvisational practice in which one sees only the bass line, that's all that is written in the score, and interprets uh, a series of numbers uh, or figures, we call this the figured bass, uh, beneath or above the bass line. Uh, that indicates the kind of harmonies and chords that we can play. And it is up to the keyboardist then to realize the, 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 the number of notes, the style of the harmony, all in support of the singers or the instruments that are playing along with it. This stands in contrast to the music of the pre-Baroque or the Renaissance age in which music, um, generally had a, a more homogeneous texture in which all of the different voices or polyphonic voices um, were generally equal with one another and they imitated one another, but the voices did not necessarily stand out from the other. In the 17th and into the 18th century, these textures began to change um, in certain types of music in which the bass line and the melody line became more prominent. And in between, it was up to keyboard instruments or other types of um, harmonic instruments to provide an accompaniment that would support the melody and that would realize the bass. Of course, both of these practices continued well into the Baroque age and frankly into our modern time in a sense. We see both of these uh, practices also demonstrated in the music in this coming weekend service, where we will hear what we call a recitative and a chorus from Handel's Messiah. The chorus, He Trusted in God, is essentially a fugue uh, in which all of the various voices of the choir sing this melody. <laughs> is kind of passed around from all the different voices of the choir. This is more of a polyphonic texture in which all the voices are equal. It is supported by instruments, uh, notably we're using the organ and the harpsichord this week, uh, but it is more in this older contrapuntal polyphonic style. Prior to the chorus, we hear what is referred to as a recitative. This is sung by one of our soloists, J.W. Keckley. And this is more of a declamatory statement in which we hear the words, all they who see him laugh him to scorn. They shoot out their lips and shake their heads, saying, and then we have the chorus. This recitative or declamation 
is supported in two different kinds of ways within Handel's Messiah. We have what is referred to as an accompanied or accompagnato recitative, which includes instruments, um, which could be violins and, uh, of course, the keyboards and bass instruments that provide a kind of colorization or they enhance the declamation or meaning of the text a little bit more. Uh, this would be contrasted by what we call a secco or a dry or simple recitative that is only supported by a bass line and a few chords on the keyboard. This particular recitative is accompagnato, and you hear this at the beginning of it with these uh, very strident dotted rhythms. And this is almost like these people. You can see it sets up the scene, like they're shaking their heads and shooting out their lips. And it gets uh, quite uh, dramatic as it supports the declamation of this text. From a keyboardist perspective, this is very uh, engaging. Um, every, anytime I have played or supported um, a performance of Handel's Messiah, it's usually at the keyboard. I've sung it a few times, but I'm mostly at the keyboard, um, either at an organ or a harpsichord. And one of the exciting elements about this kind of collaboration is the decision-making process that goes into it. Um, I work with a conductor and they kind of lay out their ideas about how the keyboards will function in the realization of the piece. And this can be different at every performance. Some conductors want a more simple approach to the harmonies and keyboards, and other people would like a much more extravagant um, and improvisational approach that allows the keyboardist to improvise in many ways to enhance the meaning of the text. And this really gets to uh, some of the primary aims that we have in the presentation of Handel's Messiah. Not only is it great music, but it is also a very, very important text. And if we lose sight of the meaning of the text, we lose sight of the meaning of, its, of the music that is there to support it. So both are equally important in this presentation, um, of any presentation of Handel's Messiah. So I hope uh, this gives you uh, a little sense of uh, what is happening in these, these two pieces this coming Sunday, and it enhances your understanding and meaning of it. Thank you.